In this video, I'm going to show you um, a view of me trying something that I've wanted to try and I'm not sure how it's going to work. I've been doing some knitting samples and I wanted to sew a blanket together by using a felted wool knit fabric and this is my recent fabric that I've done in a couple of videos I have this on there and this was from a sock pattern that I then changed and adapted um, with my own stitch pattern and you can see through it there that you do get a ribbing effect um, my two mistake rows do still show up but not very much and this is a needlepoint yarn that has now been washed in the washer in a hot um, cycle. So it looked very nice um, before I did that and now it comes out a little bit fuzzy. And that's needlepoint wool. So obviously I can use it the same way I'm using my other wools. But what I want to try today are two things. Well, I want to show you about mixing speedball fabric inks. Now my dog is brown and so I'm going to mix red and green together to get a brown and because it, when you do this you want to look at the brightness of the inks and this red is a little bit on the bright side it's not like a crimson it's a lighter red so to get a good brown, I'm probably going to need more green than red. But we'll start with almost equal amounts and see what that comes out as. So there are my two inks. And I have a rubber brayer that came with the speedball kit. And what I'm going to do is just keep going over this ink until I get a brown. And it looks like I need more red. But this is very much a greenish brown. And I had slightly less red than green on there, so... Um, you know, it all depends on the pigment that the manufacturer puts in the ink. Or if you're using acrylic paint, same thing. So it takes a couple of minutes to work the two inks together. And what you want to make sure of is that the brayer itself has mixed brown on it. Because um, you can end up with blobs of red or blobs of green. So there's a brown. It's a little bit darker than uh, my dog is. But I could always just um, add white or yellow to lighten it up. Now here is my block print of my dog. Um, and I'm finding that linoleum that is not mounted to wood tends to curve. And I also know that linoleum has to be used within a year or it starts to harden. Now that's as far as the carving. But what I need to wait and find out is if I happen to just put these somewhere and they curve, will they harden that way and then they won't really be usable unless you roll them on. But let's ink this. My dog's name is Miss Coco Bean. She is a comedian. Now. This is always slightly annoying. I have ink in other areas. With paper, that may not matter. Let me grab some paper towel. Now these are the fabric inks because what, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about is um, printing the fabric ink on wool. Now, I have my whole plan for a large blanket 
made with 25, uh, 24 panels that I then sew together. But, you know, I was, um, I met somebody yesterday and she had, a, it's basically a new dog for her. And uh, they had had two dogs for many years, um, 10 years, I guess. And last year they lost the, the little female mixed mutt. And this past week they lost their golden retriever. And luckily, um, when they lost the first dog, they had gone ahead and adopted a rescue puppy from the south. And so now when they uh, suddenly, very suddenly, lost their golden retriever, I felt so bad for the woman. She also lost her cat last year. So she's lost three of their elderly pets in a year. And so she had this flat-coated um, retriever puppy <clears throat> that is now nine months old and an absolutely gorgeous dog. And if they hadn't had that dog, she said she would not have gotten through the past year because they've lost their pets. And it just reminded me of how much animals mean to us. So, especially with me, because I'm a service dog. I'm not a service dog. I'm getting ahead of myself. My dog is a service dog and my son's dog um, who's not here all the time, Bailey, is also a service dog. And both of them are rescue dogs. And what my dog does for me is alert to seizures. And um, my son's dog does too. But my dog knows exactly when I'm going to have a seizure. And um, I've trained her to tell me. So she's invaluable to me. And, um, I mean, they're just so... It's just amazing that a dog will know when the electricity in my brain changes. That's basically, and she's part Whippet, and my son's dog is part Whippet. My dog is part Dachshund, and um, I think it's the Whippet, the miniature greyhound Whippet breed. They just know exactly what's happening. Um, so anyway, I'm rethinking my blanket project because my dog is nine. And what the woman and I were talking about yesterday is whether or not I should be getting another dog now in case I lose mine. And um, my whole blanket project has now changed because I'm thinking I have buckets of wool that I could do very pretty needle points in. I have a, a ton of needle point canvases, but my dog, um, because she's a uh, part dachshund, part whippet, she has very short hair. Her mother was a purebred short hair dachshund, and the sire was a whippet, which has very short hair. She gets very cold. So my blanket project is changing to blankets and uh, sweaters for the dog. Now, I've already made her sweaters. She has uh, four or five sweaters. She has um, sweatshirts. But I'm thinking, you know, if I need to sit here and knit, um, because it helps with my PTSD, the other aspect that helps me is obviously the dog. So I am going to try and combine the two. And this is why you're watching this, because what I'm trying is something that um, is kind of unconventional. I am going to try and print in fabric ink on felted wool fabric because I was thinking, you know, if I make her a sweater or a blanket, it would be cute to have little brown dogs all over it. Also, when I, when and if I do lose her, I then have something to remind me of her. So let's, I've got the plate inked. And this is a linoleum plate. It's very flexible. I don't expect this to go well because the fabric is so fuzzy. Now let's start with this. Um, this is a garter. What I found when I block printed a quilt was that I really had to let it dry for a couple of weeks. And then I could wash it in a permanent press wash. You can see that this still has ink on it. So not as much ink transferred 
to the fabric. But let me just even it up a little bit. And try another one. So I'm going to let this dry for a couple of weeks. Once I've felted any knitted items, after that I probably would be washing them in cold water and not in um, hot water like I did originally. Now this is something you may run into. The face didn't print very well. So I'm actually going to try and line this up and do it again. And it printed, um, it, it's printing fuzzy. It is printing fuzzy. So this is going to take some practice. And practice with inking the actual plate or block. Let's try it on the blue. So anyway, what I'm thinking of doing is knitting four and a half inch squares, block printing them with dogs, and then sewing the squares together as if they're a rag quilt. No cotton, no batting, just the knitted squares as a rag quilt with dogs on them. Now see, this is typical of block prints anyway, where sometimes you get um, one leg is lighter than the other. So I don't know how long this will last, um, as far as how permanent the ink will be. But if I'm washing things in cold water after this point, um, then it shouldn't be, you know, be harsh on the ink at all in the wash. They should last. I would think they would last. So my large blanket might become a small blanket or a series of small blankets for the dog. Because as she gets older, now there you go. As she gets older, she's going to need to be warm. That one came out the best. Now, this is knit one, knit two, purl two across the row with 32 stitches cast on size eight needles. Um, I think these were size six needles, garter stitch, um, 35 stitches, it gave me um, roughly an eight inch wide strip, and then when it shrunk, it went down to seven and a half inches. And this is a leftover fabric from a pair of socks. So if you have a favorite cat or a favorite dog or a bird or a horse, um, or even if you don't have them and you like them, like I used to breed birds, but I can't, I, I really don't want to get back into that. So at one time we had um, 50 birds in the house. So I may do a parrot, or a lovebird, or a canary, and uh, do block prints of animals. Now let's try, this is on an older piece of fabric that has a, um, a similar pattern to the blue piece. As far as the knitting goes. So on all three of those knitted fabrics, the dog shows up. I'm even, I'm making a sweater, I'm finishing a sweater. I'm even thinking, um, I made my son's sweaters and I would uh, knit, with encouraging knitting, I would knit pattern into the sweater, like to commemorate when he went to uh, Bulgaria. 
and I found some Bulgarian type colors and put a pattern in the sweater. I have a um, a sweater that I'm making for myself that is three colors but combined into one strand of yarn blue green and white I'm thinking of printing dogs around the bottom of it so I wanted to try this um, it, it is unconventional I'm actually looking at buying a small printing press and in the description they talk about printing on paper of course and the one I'm looking at you can only print four by six so that's what made me think that maybe I should knit um, this is a four and a half inch template and all of my remaining blank linoleum blocks are four by four and I also have a ton of canvases that are 4x4. Four four. So I could carve blocks that are 4x4 four four of my dog, knit squares that are 4.5 by 4.5 in any of these stitch patterns that I want, and then either sew them into rag quilts or blankets for her. And I say that because those are so easy to make and to sew. Um, I could also use the zigzag and sew flat seams on them. Or I can use fabric, knit a larger piece of fabric, and make her a sweater with dogs all over it. Or with bones all over it, or paw prints or something. So this is a way to um, keep what is in your own life and... Um, make it be part of your creativity. This is how the newsprint ink prints on canvas. And that's on a pink acrylic background. And that's why I'm thinking of getting the printing press. Because that should be a solid black dog. And the reason it isn't is because of the type of pressure I put on it when I did that. And again, normally printing on paper paper is usually cheaper and um, obviously it's not like a hand knit panel or something so you can do several prints and until you get it right so there's a little bit more risk in the fabric and but if I'm going to be knitting and sewing I might as well print dogs so that's a speedball fabric ink on slightly felted wool panels. Now I have to um, add something. Wasn't that funny that I said I'm a service dog? It wasn't a Freudian slip. What I was actually thinking was two things at once. And um, all of her sweaters and sweatshirts are basically plain or um, certain yarns. Like she has a sweater done in um, really nice um, hand spun yarn and the the yarn itself is brown and white so that has a pattern to it her sweatshirts are plain um, but her raincoat I marked it um, that she's a service dog and that's what I was thinking when I said I'm a service dog I'm thinking I could put I'm a service dog underneath here on her sweaters because she goes with me just about everywhere I go. Um, there's one store that breaks the law and doesn't want the dog in the store. But other than that, she goes everywhere with me. And she's an adorable dog. And she's extremely friendly. So people don't always realize she's a service dog. And um, I've never had a problem. Most people ask me if they can pet her before they do. One woman had lost her dog um, that day, and then I walked in with my dog, so she broke into tears, which made my dog get upset. And um, But anyway, I'm thinking if I'm going to make her sweaters or sweatshirts or even blankets, 
Another thing that I can carve in a linoleum block are the words, I'm a service dog. And this ties in with um, the quilts for veterans because actually I've already done um, two kind of um, half, well they're about a half a twin size quilts, but they're for service dogs. I just haven't gotten around to giving them to two um, military service dogs. I could also put that on those quilts. Those have um, muslin on one side and red, white, and blue on the other. But on the on the muslin side, I could print dog prints and the words "I'm a service dog," you know, and honor the dogs that sacrifice their lives all the time in the military. And when they don't give their lives, um, they offer to. Think nothing of going up and right up to a bomb or a, or an IED or something, because that's their job. So, service dogs in general are invaluable, and so not only in my case I have a service dog, but even if you don't have a service dog, I mean, who wouldn't like a dog sweater with little dogs all over it? So, you know, it's a good idea any way you look at it, and. Um, the printing press will come in if I think it makes it easier to print on a four inch square. In other words, this one came out the best and this is the most felted fabric. So I may have to really um, put more agitation or hotter water or something and get the fabric to felt more um, wash it more often maybe before I actually use it but this one came out the best even better than canvas now if you do carve text like the words on the service dog you have to remember that you have to carve them backwards I already put the dog print um, the linoleum tile over in the other place but let me reach for this one this is a whale that's going left, but when you print it, it prints right. So if I write, I'm a service dog, I have to write it backwards so that when I flip it over, it prints correctly. Um, but that's another idea. It's certainly one that I'm going to think about. Um, I have some small type, actual printing type, but it would never print on wool. It would print on paper but not on wool, so I would have to carve the words. Um, so I apologize for um, getting two thoughts out at once there, but I think I may actually add that uh, sentence, I'm a service dog, to at least one of her sweaters. Um, her raincoat has a patch on it, a big patch that says service dog, and most people see it, but not always. And, um, you know, they kind of think it's funny I have a raincoat on my dog. Um, and they don't notice that the reason she has a coat on is because of the service dog patch. They also have vests and um, short coats that say I'm a service dog or um, I'm a dog for the deaf. You know, there are different phrases that people have on their uh, dog apparel when they are service dogs. So that's where the, um, the misspeaking came in, and I think this is a, a valuable project for knitting. I have a quilt here that I have to finish assembling, and I'm going to be block printing probably eagles on that fabric. Those squares are five inches square, and that will be a, a rag quilt with, I think I'm going to make white eagles on the quilt. And um, the printing press, if it, if it makes it a more even print, those are five inch squares, they would still fit in this small printing press. The press I'm looking at is the Speedball printing press at Dick Blick, I think it's $79.99. And that is the cheapest press. Um, most of them are between three and five hundred dollars. So, and the drawback is that it only prints four by six, but it would print on quilt squares 
and it would print unknitted squares. And if I get the chance, I'll add the link to the press in the information section of this video. And here's uh, one more note. This is a 5 inch square quilt template by Omni Grid. And I have it upside down. Um, what I just did was cut that square off of my fabric for two reasons. One, I may have to go to 5 inches depending on the, the shrinkage of the squares. Um, it will still fit in a printing press, I believe. I'll have to kind of check that out. But five inches, even, even if after I felt the fabric and print it and keep the squares at five inches instead of uh, four and a half, that gives me um, more of a seam allowance so that I could still zigzag seams together or use it as a rag edge. The other thing I wanted to check is how much fraying I get on garter stitch. Because that did print on garter stitch. And the reason I had switched to that stitch was because I thought it was going to felt better like that. But it's not that much different from garter stitch. So I could really go back to doing my garter stitch squares, 5 inch squares, and um, felt the fabric. And then it might get cut down to 4 and a half, um, but it gives me extra room around the image or to center the image. So I'll be cutting blank felted fabric into 5 inch squares and then printing it. It just gives me more room around there for seam allowances uh, depending on how I want to sew something together. And I have to trim the other edge off of that on the right. Very little frame. And that doesn't really look felted. This is Line Brand Fisherman Wool. And to me, I, I was thinking it didn't felt enough but I'm not getting any fraying there. So I could print those squares, let them dry for a couple of weeks without worrying that, you know, if I move them, they're going to fall apart. And then when the ink is dry, um, stitch them together either into fabric for a sweater for her or a blanket or a, even a quilt size item. So I just wanted to add that I may go to five inch squares and I may use garter stitch, which is what how I started out in the beginning wanting to do garter stitch. Now that one, this is the one where the face came out a little pale. And the other one looks a little bit better. But that will take practice, I think, with knowing exactly um, how to put the pressure on and everything. And this is a flatter, tighter fabric that printed... Um, more clearly but it could be how much ink I had on there. So I just wanted to note that I'm probably going to go to 5 inch squares. This is going to make the video longer and I hope you don't mind um, but I, I want to do another thing here. Um, this is a, a hand woven shawl that I made using my mother's Aran yarn and you see errors or when they're not errors, it's just that the, like up here, when you end a row, you have to run the yarn into the shawl. Now, this has been washed once, and I thought that the um, obvious errors would pull in a little bit more. I did not wash it in hot water or try to felt it. And, of course, I'm upset that the errors are there. And the reason they happened, <coughs> excuse me, is because the loom I was using um, had a metal eyes on the heddle and the yarns were not moving slew, uh, smoothly when I changed the sheds. So, and I didn't notice them all as I was doing it for some reason. So what I'm thinking, um, because it's 
yarn that my mother had. I obviously want to keep it. But what I've been wondering is if I block print something right over that error, is that going to make it look worse or better? So we're going to try that out since I have the fabric ink out and I'm, I've been block printing dogs. Now, I couldn't decide what I wanted to put on this shawl. My mother loved bluebirds. And I have a um, bluebird block that, you know, even though it's a bird, I think of it as a bluebird. So I'm going to um, ink this with some blue ink, and we're going to find out if a bluebird on there looks better or worse. Okay, I've gotten the blue ink out, and I have it in the tray. And what you have to make sure of, um, I had just been working with the brown, and so I had the brayer was soaking, and the tray had water in it. You have to make sure that you wipe water off of both of those when you change colors, because um, otherwise the ink does get thinned out and doesn't apply quite as well. And again, I'm getting um, ink on the block, so I'm just going to wipe that off. And actually, you know, that's a reminder to me to go back with a knife and um, lower that area of the wood. But for now, I'll just wipe that off. So there's our bluebird. And let's see how this goes. I probably should have pressed the shawl first so that it was very flat. Now again, same as with the knitting, it prints a little fuzzy. But I'm not sure that's a bad thing. Um, if you had a uh, solid birds on there, um, it, would, it might look too plasticky. So now the error is not as noticeable. It's definitely not as noticeable. When you have plain white fabric like that or off-white fabric, every little mistake does show up. And like I said, it happened to be uh, the loom I was using. And I got a better loom and things like that don't happen anymore. But none of that helped this shawl. So now there are like, there are three here that the bird is not really going to cover. But let's see if we can. And that one came out better. And you absolutely don't even look at the errors because your eye is drawn right to the bird. Let's do another one. I'm going to do them randomly. I mean, um, I guess my shawl is going to have a flock of bluebirds. I have bluebirds in, um, not in my yard, they don't nest in my yard, but my neighbor across the street, about five years ago, the bluebirds came back. We had lost them for quite a few years, and then all of a sudden she uh, put up four nest boxes, and ever since then there have been bluebirds everywhere, and they're beautiful. They're not quite that blue, <clears throat> excuse me, they're more gray-blue. Now, with most weaving, um, I think, errors show up more on one side or the other. So I did, <clears throat> I did check and see which side looked worse before I started this. 
And now, of course, I'll have to let this dry, the ink dry, for about two weeks before I try to wash it. But, you know, I, I, I've been weaving for many, many years, and here was my mother's good yarn and probably the worst weaving I've done in years. So this is a way to um, make the shawl look better, but also make me feel better about the whole project. You'll notice I have rocks on the table. Those are actually holding down some linoleum blocks. I'm trying to get them flat because I'm going to use them. But let me get those out of the way. So there are a few bluebirds. And now I'll finish doing them on the rest of the shawl. But here's here's that big error. Completely, it, it just covers it. You don't even look at it. And here's the one that had three. And so here's, um, I missed a, um, a couple of warp threads there. But when you look at the shawl now, you don't look at that. One, two, three, four, so that's six of them. Now if I spread it out and put another group of six over here, and then maybe a few in the middle. So let me go ahead and finish doing that. I have to spread the shawl out a little better. Now this side so far has five. Um, I have two errors here. One is an extra um, weft thread with a little bit of puffy that I can trim off. And this is the same thing um, that I can probably trim that puffiness off of. So they almost don't qualify as bad enough to really cover up. Over here is one that's more noticeable. So I think I'm going to put a bird there. But there's the overall effect. And I'm going to like the shawl. You know, it's been one of those things that I made it and then I put it away because I didn't do it as well as I wanted to. Now, again, same as with the knitting, the, um, the yarn is not soaking up an awful lot of ink. And it's printing fuzzy. But it's still, I think, an improvement on the shawl. So let's cover this mistake right here. And maybe have the bird head up. Um, I, was, I didn't want to get too much of a line where, you know, just a straight line of birds. So now to kind of balance the design, I'll put another one up here, and I will actually have a shawl with a flock of bluebirds on it. So there's another way you can use speedball fabric and paper ink on a fabric. And there is a better view of the shawl with the bluebirds on it. I pinned it to the wall and I'm going to leave it there for a couple of weeks. It, it looks better. It looks better. I think even if I hadn't had errors in it, it would um, improve the shawl anyway. So now what, we'll, um, what I'll have to find out with both the knitting and the weaving is if I give these uh, the ink a good full two weeks to dry and then wash the item in cold water, probably hand wash um, this in cold water and uh, just to make sure that the ink doesn't bleed at all and you know there are areas where the extra ink on the block got on there I could maybe even shave that off with a knife if it's not puppy enough to cut off with uh, scissors but that's how they print 
and I like it. I like it. I think it's a big improvement on the shawl.